let's talk about the use of surgical drains because they're a necessary evil um, in the sense that drains help us. Drains are designed to remove fluid that the body produces in response to surgery. And for a mastectomy, drains are essential. There's no patient that undergoes a mastectomy that does not have a drainage tube placed at the time of the surgery. Why does the body even produce fluid? Well, if you've ever hurt yourself, like when you're a kid, you maybe you broke an arm or a leg or something falling from a tree, what's the first thing that happens to your leg or your arm that's injured? Well, it swells up. It's, all of a sudden, within a matter of minutes, there's um, a significant swelling in that area. And that's the body's response to trauma or to injury. The tissues just get infiltrated with a bunch of fluid. That's a similar kind of fluid as what is produced after a mastectomy. The reason that there's fluid that collects into the breast space is because of a network, a network of channels called the lymphatic system. Maybe you've heard of it. The short description of the lymphatic system is um, it runs all through our entire body from head to toe. Every inch of tissues have or has this uh, lymphatic system. And think of the lymphatics as a complex network of channels, just like our circulation system, just like our, the blood flow that runs through the arteries and veins of our bodies. The lymphatics uh, are very similar. There's these tiny little channels that run throughout all of our tissues to drain fluid that is left over from um, the blood flow that goes through our tissues. So that's sort of a very simplistic way to think of what the lymphatics are. And in the breast, there are a lot of lymphatics, all these channels running through the breast tissue. The breast surgeon can't see those lymphatic channels when he or she is performing a mastectomy. So the mastectomy, when the mastectomy is done, all that breast tissue is removed by cutting through the breast tissue, but also by necessity, the lymphatic channels and the lymphatic network has to be cut as well. So what happens when all those little channels are cut? Well, the fluid running through those channels um, now uh, has nowhere to, um, to be diverted back to the circulatory system. So um, the, the fluid that runs through those channels just kind of spills into the empty breast space. We don't want that fluid to collect inside the breast space because then that would result in something called a seroma. A seroma is just refers to a fluid collection inside the breast space. And a seroma is not a good thing for several reasons, but the most important reason is because it, it, it puts you at a bit higher risk for infection. Bacteria like to live and breed in, a, in an environment that's moist and has um, a, a nice broth, sort of, so to speak, and a seroma or a fluid collection provides that broth for proliferation of bacteria. So there's a higher risk uh, of infection in the setting of seroma. Now, that's not to scare you or anyone. It's just uh, one of the risks that we face with a mastectomy. And so we have to reduce that risk and minimize that risk. That's the point here. We really, every maneuver that I take and every device that I use is designed to lessen that risk to as low as possible. Now, just to qualify this, a seroma is not a life-threatening thing. It's not a complication that is life-threatening. Uh, it's just something that can lead to a further surgery. Um, if there's an infection present, then certainly that might warrant another surgery. And so we wanna minimize that chance. So let's go into the details of what a drain looks like. So here's a close-up of a drain, and um, it's, it's a long tube and it's all made of silicone. So it's just one long tube that extends from the bulb on the end here. This is the bulb. This is the collection can container. And the tubing runs from the bulb all the way to the end part of it, which is this white segment here. This white segment is the segment of the drain that stays in the breast pocket. And this is what actually sucks the fluid out of the breast pocket to prevent it from accumulating inside the breast. Now, you can see a little uh, black dot right here, and from the black dot all the way to the tip of the um, end of the drain, this is the segment that is inside of the breast pocket. 
And it's a pretty long segment, um, but it's important that it be long because you can imagine that the breast pocket after mastectomy is pretty big. It's a sizable volume. And so you need to have a long drainage tube in order to suction all the fluid and get all of those little bits of fluid out of the breast pocket to prevent a seroma from occurring. Now, um, with this drain um, on the inside of the breast pocket, uh, where this black dot indicates where the rest of the tubing exits the skin. So typically, um, typically if I could just sort of simulate, the drain uh, wraps around inside the breast pocket and then the, the drainage tube exits the breast pocket right here on the side. Sort of, uh, it comes out right below the front of the armpit region. Somewhere, somewhere discreet, somewhere uh, where the scar can heal well, and somewhere that's sort of out of the way. You wouldn't want it to come straight out of the breast. That would be a very unnatural position for the drain to be exiting. The fluid travels through the silicone tube all the way through and into this collection bulb. <clears throat> and this bulb is designed to um, be able to accommodate 100 cc's or 100 milliliters of fluid. There's a little nipple at the end here, a little um, plug that um, allows the emptying of the fluid from the drain bulb. And, um, and then in order to place the drain on suction, you have to squeeze it down, put the uh, plug back into the little nipple device, and then releasing it applies suction to the drain itself. And that's how the, drain, the, the fluid um, returns back into the bulb. Now, one question is, gosh, well, you know, that seems like a big nuisance, and it is a big nuisance, but there's no other way to remove fluid from the breast pocket without a drainage tube. It's physiologically not possible without some device to actually suction it out. Um, the body's not going to resorb that fluid on its own, not at the pace that the fluid is being produced. Over time, over the course of um, typically about two or three weeks, the amount of fluid that's produced decreases. So the drain output, the, the volume of fluid that comes out of the drain, decreases over, the over time. And once it reaches a certain threshold of volume output, and for me that threshold is 24 cc's in 24 hours, once it goes below that volume production rate, then I can safely remove the drain with minimal worry that the patient's going to have a seroma that small amount of fluid the body can resorb over time. So during that two or three week period, sometimes a little bit longer for certain patients, yeah, it's a bit of a nuisance to have a drainage tube exiting from the skin and um, sometimes patients need to have two drains on each, uh, for each breast. If they have a double mastectomy, that's between two to four drains total. Those are a little challenging to manage, but you know, we can, uh, for my patients, they get specialized sort of um, uh, little devices that go around the body to which a patient can clip their drains and just make it more convenient. Um, we can find ways to hide the drains under their, their clothing so that nobody would ever know that they have these drainage tubes and um, have specialized protocols to make sure that the drain sites stay nice and clean, um, to, again, to minimize the chance of infection. And there are ways we can make having the drains as comfortable an experience as possible. So every little detail of that period of time is really taken care of. I try to make sure that every, every one of my patients has the most comfortable experience with their drains uh, throughout that process. Now, drains are critically important to have at the time of the mastectomy. Are drains necessary for other types of operations, such as a lumpectomy? Not necessarily. If a patient has a lumpectomy to treat her breast cancer, um, and if the uh, amount of tissue that's removed from the breast is, is large enough to cause some disruption of the lymphatics, uh, lymphatic system, then I may elect to put a drain in place just temporarily for a few days, up to a week perhaps, in order to remove that fluid and make sure that there's no chance or minimal chance of seroma formation. However, for a mastectomy, particularly if the patient has to have her lymph nodes removed to treat 
cancer that has spread to the lymph nodes, absolutely she needs to have drainage tubes and typically on the order of about two and a half to three weeks, sometimes longer. Every patient's different. There's no way to predict how long you might need a drain to be in place. However, um, we just take it a day at a time and it's a step at a time and, and, and this relates back to the fact that breast reconstruction is a process and we have to make decisions um, as we go through this process together.